we continue to have much to celebrate and to be proud of. I would like you to join me in welcoming our newly elected trustees, Kelly Mokashi and Mary Jo Carrion to our team. This is an important time for public education and effective leadership is critical. I'm pleased to have the opportunity to work with you both. I also wanted to acknowledge our outgoing trustees, Valerie Arkin and Jamie Yee, for their many years of service to the Pleasanton community. Your impact will leave lasting, ongoing impressions in our work. Thank you. I'm grateful for our leadership team, which includes our board of trustees, but also the members of executive cabinet. 2020 has been a year of challenges, of conflict and of change. Yet I've never believed more in the shared mission and vision statements that guide our work together. Our students will make a better world and each and every one of them will grow to be a resourceful, resilient, responsible and engaged world citizen. This year has challenged us to embrace and model the very qualities we work to instill in our students. We were called on to look inward and to focus our energies while at the same time reaching outside of ourselves and outside of our personal comfort zones. Over the past two years, the concept of the us in PUSD has taken shape, recognizing that each member of our team plays a vital role in the health, well-being, and education of our young people. It has been inspiring to see how this idea has expanded beyond the district into, mem into members of the greater Pleasanton community. One of the most inspiring efforts has been by the We Are Pleasanton movement, started by lo a local business owner, Todd Uticall. Todd's a great guy and a leader in our community. He saw a need and he wanted to do some good, so he called his friends. The We Are Pleasanton group created an ambitious list of projects they are fundraising for with the help of PPIE, which will benefit students across the district. Their first project is a massive shade structure at Amador Valley, and they have almost hit their fundraising goal to make it happy, happen. Wouldn't it be great if we could help them hit that mark today? As we celebrate and recognize our 2020 accomplishments, let's pay something forward for the next generation of students. Over the course of our time together this afternoon, I'd like to challenge you to help put some wind in their sails by capturing the QR code on the screen with your cell phone and making a contribution. If we exceed what is needed for this project, the dollars will be applied to their next project. Let's do this together. After all, we are Pleasanton. 2020 started off like any other year. We were all doing the things we know and love and our educators and staff continued to deliver a world-class education to each of our students. This picture was captured at Pirate Night at Alisal. Obviously, I forgot my pirate pajamas that night. Likewise, teachers were connecting with students and our principals were engaging with our youngest learners and high school students were focused on connection and community, which was built inside of our classrooms. And we continued to learn about diversity and celebrated the cultures of our families. We broke ground on new and exciting Measure I-1 projects and embraced and enjoyed the many talents of our students. We celebrated their successes as they continue to give us hope for the future and for a better world. We also celebrated our schools as they were recognized for their excellence. And we recognized our phenomenal PUSD employees. And then came March. It was a month that will not soon be forgotten. On March 3rd, Measure M was narrowly defeated and less than two weeks later on March 15th, our schools were shuttered due to the rapid spread of a global pandemic. Both of those events had devastating consequences while at the same time they presented opportunities. The closure of our schools presented significant challenges to the Pleasanton community. While no one's fault and certainly outside of our ability to control, the responsibility for responding was thrust upon us. It necessitated new thinking, new strategies and forging new relationships. So we locked arms together and we did what was required. In many ways, we became the best versions of ourselves. 
we found the us in PUSD. I'm reminded of something that Mr. Rogers shared about what his mother taught him when facing scary times. She said to look for the helpers. Although classrooms and campuses were closed, on March 16th, our nutrition services team didn't miss a beat, beginning with serving grab and go lunches to meals or to families um, in need. This is a testament to the dedication of our employees and their ability to turn on a dime to serve our community with food, kindness, and hope. We are grateful for our classified employees who continue to work in the front lines of this pandemic. They have been purveyors of hope for our families, serving continuously through all seasons of this pandemic. Through the rain, heat, and smoke, our central nutrition services workers and many volunteers were there for our families. To date, they have served over 300,000 meals to our community. While technology is nothing new to us, we needed to support our teachers in making the shift to remote learning in just five short days. And so Team PUSD did just that. The work of our integration specialists has been vital to our success. In a matter of days, the integration specialists put together a virtual academy for teachers that included both live daily sessions and ongoing one-on-one -on -one support. Our teaching and learning division continues to work diligently to enhance each student's remote learning experience. And our technology services team led a Herculean effort to provide contactless delivery of devices and Wi-Fi hotspots to students across the district. I was pleased to be able to join the PUSD DoorDash team and deliver devices personally. To date, we've distributed over 10,000 devices. Likewise, our school site team spent hours coordinating and putting together classroom supplies for distribution. Teachers quickly adjusted to different classroom setups, whether they were working at site or from home. This is a photo of Allison McClushen's classroom setup at Fairlands. It looks a bit like a new age command center, I think. Classes across the district became virtual via Zoom and Google Classroom. This is Mrs. DeVries Spanish class at Pleasanton Middle School. Schools found new ways to connect with students and families. Several elementary schools organized drive-by parades throughout their neighborhoods. And our teachers reached out to their students over social media to let them know that while they're separated by distance, they are not alone. PSD music teachers got together to record a song for their students to show them that they can create music wherever they are. Hello, Pleasanton community. This is Mrs. Seuss from Pleasanton Middle School. I miss making music with all of my students. I hope you are all well and safe and know that I miss you and care about you all very much. Hi, Pleasanton Music students. It's Mr. Dandria at Amador Valley High School. I hope that you are staying safe, healthy, and well in this time of social distancing. Uh, we certainly miss seeing you all in our classes, but I hope you're getting to make some music on your own. Stay well. Hi everyone, it's Miss Phillips. I teach at Hurston at Minute Chills and I've done so for 18 years. I miss you all very much. Everybody out there keep making music. Sam sent at my piano and I just played that and a trash can. You never know where you can make music. And our physical education teachers inspired their students by showing how they stay active through the shelter in place. Coach Battalaga, there we go. Good morning, Pleasanton students. This is Coach Battalaga. It's Thursday morning, and right now I'm high up on the Pleasanton Ridge. I like to come here in the mornings to kind of get physically and mentally cleansed and ready for the day. On behalf of the Pleasanton Unified School District PE teachers, we wanted to put together a video to show you how we are all trying to stay physically and mentally sharp. Coach Badalega also made the effort to keep me healthy during the spring. He challenged me to join him hiking the ridge. And I just wanted to say thank you, Tony. As the pandemic continued, 
our high school teams found new ways to honor our senior class of 2020. Amador and Foothill senior class parent communities purchased lawn signs for every member of the class of 2020, and our high school teams delivered them to each graduate. Village high school staff also got creative in honoring their graduates. And our friends at the city led a hand to help parents and staff line Main Street with hundreds of purple, blue, and gold ribbons as a tribute to our graduates. Members of our business community also honored seniors to support and sometimes, sometimes even with ice cream. So here's, here's Todd again, there he is, that's the guy. And that's the QR code, you know what to do. Our high schools organized drive-through commencements for students to create some of the feel of the traditional rite of passage for seniors when they walked across the stage. The class of 2020 didn't get the pomp and circumstance that they had earned through hard work and grit. It was something that we all had to accept as being out of our control. So instead, we lit up the sky. With each firework that our partners at PPIE, the City of Pleasanton, and the Alameda County Fairgrounds made possible, we thought of the profound impact that each of our graduates would inevitably have on this world. With many unknowns and health requirements that continue to shift, we got to work planning for the 2021 school year. We organized task forces and steering committees, and we held numerous virtual town hall meetings, which brought together thousands of stakeholders. We know how important athletics and music is to our students. These activities shape identities, bring joy, and anchor students to school. And we were thrilled when the combined efforts of our parents, coaches, and administrators swayed the county and state public health officers to allow sports and music camps to commence back in June. We saw community groups and Boy Scout troops print and donate personal protective equipment for essential employees who were beginning to return to work. We continued to engage the community in extensive planning geared towards providing families with high quality instructional models. Thank you to the parents, teachers, students, staff, and community members who helped inform our process as we move forward together. There was a mixture of anxiety and anticipation as our schools opened in August remotely. It was a blessing to watch teachers rise to the challenge as they readied for the arrival of their students. No one expected perfection, but man, did our teachers deliver. With smiles on their faces, our teachers made history on the first day of school. They showed students what resilience looks like, creating new ways to connect and to engage in learning. Our high schools welcomed Dons and Falcons, while the middle schools brought Huskies and Patriots and Panthers into the fold. Our elementary teachers transformed their physical classrooms into fun learning spaces for their students. And our students showed up with big miles, smiles on their faces, well, mostly. Classes developed new norms and teachers created spaces where students felt safe and eager to engage. Our kids club, STEAM preschool, and Horizon early education programs reopened in July in time to provide in-person support for our youngest learners. Our principals found new ways to engage with families, making these events more accessible. They didn't even have to leave their homes to do so. Our counseling teams continued to be accessible to students and have created virtual wellness centers to support student mental health. Our Student Support Services Department collaborated with Care Solace to make it easier for families to end staff to connect to mental health supports. To date, this partnership has helped connect over 2,000 individuals in our community to mental health services. On October 14th, with the extraordinary support from our classified employees, we were able to open our small cohort supervision program to support students struggling with accessing remote learning. This is special day class, Mr. Brazil, and he came into his classroom at Alisal to support his small cohort and his students who are learning remotely all at the same time. 
the gains students in these cohorts have made has been remarkable. And they in turn have breathed new life into our classrooms. Site practices were adjusted to support health and safety as the small cohorts continued to grow. As we waited for health conditions to improve, we all found new ways to connect, to continue doing the things that we love from wherever we were. One of my favorite traditions is connecting QSD alumni with our board of trustees. Our new Zoom ability, yes, that, that's my word, allowed us to connect in a new and meaningful way to alumni who are attending university, including those who are close to home and those who were far away. Our high schools found new ways to honor student athletes. Schools found new ways to keep special traditions going strong. And they seem to have had some fun while doing so. One of my favorite stories from the past year comes from Fairlands, where the fifth grade team transformed the traditional outdoor education experience into a virtual science camp. Teachers came together to pack over 120 bags, camping bags, with material for their fifth graders to create an immersive week-long camping experience. Through early morning yoga, afternoon nature and science lessons, and evening campfire activities, the Fairlands Flyers were able to bring the outdoor education experience home, not only for our students, but also for their families. But don't take it from me. Listen to what this flyer had to say. Hey guys, Linus here, aka Sakshi, and today I'm going to tell you my top four favorite things about VCamp. I technically like the whole VCamp, but I can't fit the whole VCamp into one video. That's just unreasonable. Anyways, the four things I liked about VCamp are my scores, the dance party, and um, 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 um the banana bandana magic. And I also liked um the Star Talk. It was really, really cool. Hey guys, Linus here, aka. While our students were out of classrooms and that was difficult, our facilities and construction team has used the situation to accelerate various Measure I-1 and facility improvement projects. In November, we broke ground on the new Amador Valley High School Science Classroom Building. That same day, we broke ground on the Science and Career Technical Education Building at Foothill High School. The progress made by our facilities and construction team has been remarkable. The foundations for both Amador and Foot, the, both the Amador and Foothill buildings are being laid even as we speak. Both projects will provide modernized classrooms at our nationally recognized high schools, creating learning environments that befit our world-class educators and our students. Both buildings would not have been possible without the generation, excuse me, generosity of our community via Measure I-1. New roofing and HVAC projects are being installed on classroom buildings across the district. Pictured here is the project at Fairlands. And to give you an idea of the need and impact of these projects, here's a before and after picture of the roofing and HVAC project at Alisal Elementary School. We also completed the rebuild of the Harvest Park Library, which restored what has always been considered the heart of the campus for students. Recently, we initiated the Hart Middle School project, which will include a new science building, which illustrated in this rendering by our architects. It will also address parking and traffic flow issues at the site. Finally, I'm excited to highlight the Lydixon Elementary School rebuild project. These new buildings, play structure and blacktop mark the completion of phase one. Here are a few shots of your Measure I-1 dollars at work at Lydixon. These modern learning environments are beautiful and the Lancers are getting excited about their opportunity. In addition to these Measure I-1 projects, we have worked this past year to reinvest in the maintenance and upkeep of our facilities. As you walk onto the campus at Vintage Hills, you'll notice a fresh coat of paint. This will protect the buildings from deterioration that occurs when wood is exposed to the elements. 
We've also repainted the entire Amador campus, which has en enhanced the look of the school and resulted in new levels of pride that staff, alumni, and current students feel for their school. While this year posed many challenges, and we have a lot to be proud of, there has been so much good that has come from the members of our stakeholders. I'm grateful for each of you who stepped up and stepped in to make a difference. There's that QR code again. This is your last chance. We could not have done any of this without the dedication of our classified team members who engaged to support families in new ways. Our teachers who shifted to entirely new teaching and learning models. Our parents and community members who stepped up and into new roles. Our administrators who rolled up their sleeves, planned and replanned and stayed the course. And most importantly, our young people who taught us a bit about grit, persistence and hope. We truly are better together. I simply could not be more grateful for the us in PUSD. As a recognition of our collective work over the past year, I'm proud to share our annual report for 2020, which you can access by scanning the QR code on your screen. Thank you again for your time and your ongoing support. And at this 